adverts really can be the scourge of the internet. It doesn't matter if all you're trying to do is take a reading of how fast your broadband is, or if you're just trying to read the local news. Like on this page, it's really difficult to see where the news and the adverts begin and end. They're just so intertwined with each other. It's really confusing and absolutely horrible. Wouldn't it just be great if you could get rid of all of those ads and just see your web page cleanly? It would help all round. Your page would load quicker. Everything would be more performant. It would be amazing. Well, with a Raspberry Pi and the Pi Hole software, you can. Let me show you how to install it and get it all set up right now. Hi, my name is Jeff and I'm an IT professional who's been in the industry for 30 years. In my spare time, I like nothing more than playing with Raspberry Pis and building little projects with them. Sure you do too. If you like what you see here, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you want to see more, and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put out another video. This time, we're going to be trying to eliminate all of those adverts from your browsing experience and make your life a whole lot easier. This will be done with a Raspberry Pi running software called Pihole. So what is Pihole? Well, Pihole is a special DNS server that internally maintains a list of all of the websites that contain advertising. And what it does is it blocks access to them. So when you load up a web page that references one of these websites, I hold blocks access to it, meaning that those adverts then can't appear. Your website loads faster and everything appears just much cleaner. The software is available at pihole.net and all of the installation options are just listed out here. You can run it as a Docker container. But this time, I'm just gonna install it directly on top of Raspberry Pi OS. So I'm gonna use this option too. And installation really couldn't be easier. It really consists of just one command. And that is what I've highlighted here. In my case, I'm going to be running this on a Raspberry Pi 3B. However, you could run this on a Raspberry Pi 0 if you wanted to. It does not require a lot of processing power. That said, if you are running it on a Pi 0, I would recommend that you get a micro SD to Ethernet adapter so that you can run it hardwired. I have experienced a few issues with the Pi 0W running a wireless network. So I think in this particular case, you'd probably be better off running it with a hardwired connection straight into your router. On my Raspberry Pi 3, I've installed the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS Lite. If you're unsure how to install Raspberry Pi OS, you can look at my video on the subject that's just here. However, I've got all mine installed, so let's just go and switch over to the terminal and get the software installed. Here we are at the terminal of my Raspberry Pi. And as mentioned on the website, all you have to do to install Pihole is just run this command. Through the install, it asks us a few questions. This first one is just an introduction, so it's just OK for that. Pihole is supported by donations, but there's nothing forcing you into that. As stated here, Pihole is a DNS server on your network. And so it really benefits from having a static IP address so that you can then configure that within your router. These next few screens take you through this process. In this case, my Raspberry Pi is running on its wireless network interface, so I need to select that and then move on. It gives us the option here of taking the current IP address for the Raspberry Pi and making that static. There is a certain amount of danger here make sure it doesn't clash with any other settings within your router. What you don't want to happen is for this to become static and then some other device be added to your network later on and the router give it the same IP. You can then end up with a world of pain. So just make sure this IP address can't be used anywhere else in your network. This next page is just a confirmation of what I was just saying about IP address conflicts. I'm OK with that. So let's move on. The next screen here asks us, who do we want to use as our normal DNS provider? There are a whole bunch of options here, including a custom option at the end. Personally, I really like the open DNS DNS servers. As mentioned earlier, Pihole uses a blacklist of websites that it will then subsequently block from your network. 
Stephen Black's list is the default list that Pi-hole uses. So let's just go ahead and accept that. An administrative web interface is provided for Pi-hole. It's extremely informative and really easy to use. So I very much recommend that you install that. As the admin interface is a website, you need to run a web server. This page gives you the opportunity to install a very lightweight web server and all of the required dependencies. So let's go ahead and install that. This next page allows you to record the DNS queries that are coming into the system. It's a very good idea to do this so that you can look back at them later on. Since I'm running this on my internal network, I don't have any problem with this showing me everything. After this, the software will just go ahead and install. Let's just wait for that to complete. Now the install is complete, it just gives us this little summary page. The most important thing on here is the admin web page password. Make a note of this as you'll need this to log in. After that, just hit OK. Now Pi-hole is installed, I have to configure my router to use that as the default DNS server for my network. Let's go and take a look at the settings for that right now. In my router, I have to go to the DHCP server settings in order to set the DNS servers that I want to use on my network. In this case, I'm just using 1.1.1.1 as my primary DNS server and 1.0.0.1 as my secondary. All I have to do here is change the IP address of the primary DNS server to be that of my Raspberry Pi. For the secondary DNS server, I can just delete it entirely. After this, I just need to save the settings. Once they're saved, any new device connecting to my network will then be using this as its DNS server. Anything that was already connected would still be using the old settings. So here, it might be an idea to reboot your router or just reconnect the device that you want to use. Now, I've gone through reconnecting my PC to the network. I'm going to go back to the speed test page just to see what a difference it's made. And yes, as you can see here, all of those adverts are gone. I can still make use of the website. I can still check my internet bandwidth just fine. All of the other functionality is completely unaffected, but just none of those adverts are showing up. Let's go and take a look at the news website. On this website, as I scroll down, you can see that all of the adverts are no longer there. And finally, I can really easily read the news article without having to jump through all of those adverts. Sure, some still are just appearing on the right hand side here, but they're not actually getting in the way of my browsing. Now, all of this may look a little bit too good to be true, and there are actually some hidden gotchas. Let's go and take a quick look at an example where it doesn't work too well. As you can see here, I've just done a search on Google for Raspberry Pi 5. Now at the top of the search results, there's all of these sponsored links. The problem is, if I click on any of these now, it can't actually get to them. The reason why is that these sponsored links are actually sponsored by ad services. And Google Ad Services is one of the URLs that's blocked by default by the Pi-hole software. So we can't click through to any of those sponsored links, which can be really inconvenient. However, there is a way around this. All we have to do is log in to the Pi-hole admin website and make a few changes. Let me go and show you that. In order to access the Pi-hole admin interface, all you have to do is open a browser, go to the address bar, put in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi forward slash admin. That will then bring up this page. All you have to do then is type in the password that the installer gave you. Once you're logged in, you get to this summary page. As you can see here, already this DNS server has been hit with over 600 queries and 120 of those have been blocked. That's nearly 20% of all of the queries. Now, all we want to do here is add a new whitelisted domain. And to be honest, this is probably the only thing that you'll likely do on a frequent basis on this website. In order to do so, just go to this domains option. And then in the box here, you just want to type in the host name that you want to add to the whitelist. In our case, this is the URL for Google Ad Services. You then just hit the add to whitelist button. After doing this, the domain will be added to the whitelist and now you'll be able to access it just fine. So if I go back to that Google search that I did earlier for Raspberry Pi 5, and now I click on one of the sponsored links, you'll see it will take me there. 
with absolutely no problem. Now, depending on your circumstances and the websites that you go to frequently, there may be a number of these advert websites that you'll need to add to your whitelist. However, it's unlikely to be more than about five or six. So there you go. Now you can browse the internet in a largely ad-free environment. That's just about everything for this video. I just wanted to thank you so much for watching. And just once again, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to see more and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out another video. What are your favourite Pi projects? Let me know in the comments section below. And also, if you've got any suggestions for other projects for me to do in the future, let me know there as well. Thanks so much for watching till the end. Until next time, bye for now.